Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and Wizards just announced huge changes to the 2019 Pro Scene, and basically all the Pro Level-ish events that they run. And while this is surprising, they did warn us that uh, huge changes were coming, and at the end of this article, they continue to warn us that huge changes are coming. I think we all know what it is at this point. So this probably cringe fest was written by Blake Rasmussen. Pretend I said that sentence in reverse if you want to know why I said that. So anyway, it starts with uh, a rather odd sentence, actually. The Grand Prix schedule for 2019 is finally here. Yay! And people have been asking for this. It's October. Uh, and with it comes an update to how you qualify for the Pro Tour in 2019. Two completely different events. Or are they? I can't afford to license dramatic music. Let's get right into what you need to know. Grand Prix weekends are getting a new look and a new name. Magic Fest. Let me stop you right there, Blake Rasmussen and Wizards of the Coast. If you add the word fest to the end of anything in the entire state of Wisconsin, you automatically have to have deep fried cheese curds and funnel cake at it. So you damn well better. I mean, you can have cinnamon sugar elephant ears or tiger paws. That's cool, but there better be a funnel cake stand right next to it. You want to bring in, you know, deep fried pickles or giant pickle on a stick? Okay, I don't tell you how to live your life, but there damn well better be deep fried cheese curds there. So anyway, they're naming it Magic Fest. All one word, capital F. I can tell they put a ton of thought and clever insight and, and planning into that name. They didn't just make it up on the spot and said, yeah, let's go with it. Then again, it says what it is. Although, I mean, you could think it's like an illusionist convention. So maybe they could have taken a little extra time on that one. I mean, anybody else think it could have been called MTG Fest? So anyway, these weekends will play host to the Grand Prix main event, but will also include all of the side events, artists, panels, qualifying tournaments, and more that Magic fans love. Um, I'm no expert on these events and I've never been to one, but isn't that what they already do? I've never heard of a Grand Prix not having side events. So correct me if I'm wrong, but so far they've changed nothing. Uh, they'll also have qualifying tournaments, which I'm pretty sure I heard they also held at Grand Prix. They would have qualifiers for the upcoming Pro Tour at the Grand Prix. Here's where it gets a little bit weird and the phrasing is a bit odd. Each Pro Tour in 2019 will be hosted at a Magic Fest. I mean, I would have just come out and, and said it. We're, we're holding both events at the same place at the same time. So as far as I know, uh, the Pro Tour you have to qualify for, but you can go as a spectator and, you know, buy stuff, sell cards, whatever. It's still a thing. Uh, but the Grand Prix is like the big public one. You buy a ticket, you show up. I don't think you have to qualify. I'm pretty sure. The fact that I'm not 100% sure shows you how much I give a crap about the Pro Scene. And I run a YouTube channel about Magic the Gathering. If they can't get me to watch or give a crap or pay attention to how they work at a fundamental level, I mean, why even try? So they're combining them. And by the way, there's going to be uh, six Pro Tours in uh, 2019, not four. They already announced that. But the bigger thing is that they're combining them into one event. And for me, just right out of the gate, that sounds like a wonderful idea. I mean, it's efficient and you can qualify for one or, or compete in both probably, maybe, I don't know. You know what? Let's stop speculating and keep reading. How about that? So uh, CFB events have released the full magic schedule. That's uh, Channel Fireball. Uh, you can find it on their website here. I'm not going to click on that. I don't care. Uh, you can also see updates uh, to the prize pool here. That I care about. Let's click on that. Uh, so the prize pools are based on attendance, I guess, or the size or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's like registered people or the anticipated maximum size. I would assume registered people. Worst case scenario, uh, 64th place gets 300 bucks. Wonderful. First place gets six grand. That's kind of crap. Uh, and then on the biggest ones, uh, 225th place gets $200. And for comparison, 64th still gets 300. And then uh, first place gets 10 grand. Not bad. That is still kind of not a lot, but it also kind of still is a lot. And you know what? Let's go further with that because people aren't going to get this, okay? 10,000, you come in first place. And second place is five grand, by the way. And if not enough people attend, it shrinks to 6,000, 3,000, okay? Not enough to be a pro player. You could literally win every single one of them and, and take home 60 grand before taxes and before expenses. Hotel, travel, buying the cards themselves. I mean, you don't have any sponsors. Okay, that's highly unlikely. Um, it's not going to work. You're, you're not going to come in first at every single one, by the way. So you're probably going to take in something below the poverty level. So yes, they're valid in saying that it is virtually impossible from a money standpoint to be a pro player full-time. That is not incorrect. I am not disputing that. But 
you take a Friday off of work, spend a couple hundred bucks, call it a vacation. You go to a Grand Prix and and you, you compete because you think it'll be fun and you've been playing forever. And you could come away with $10,000. Hell, you could come in 32nd place and on a good day come in with uh, $400. That's just about the whole damn trip. I mean, you do well enough. Eighth place gets 1250 bucks. That ain't no joke. So maybe since the audience isn't there and the money isn't there, the funding isn't there, and it's not, you know, like the pro uh, poker scene where the entry fee is, what, like a grand or something, maybe they shouldn't be trying to be full-time pro players. But then the alternative is, well, what do you, work a job and then somehow magically get your boss to let you off for an entire weekend or an entire week, honestly? So yeah, it is a problem. I, just my solution is don't do it full time. But then it's a bunch of spoiled rich kids who like work for their parents' company or something. And they got money to travel and burn on losing. And yeah, nobody likes that. So yeah, the whole scene is a disaster right now. That's why they're trying to redo it. But um, Wizards has the correct solution to all of this. Get more people to watch and attend so that it's worth more money. They can make more, I don't know, Twitch revenue. Do they even put ads on it? Do they even have subscribers? Are people sending them super chats on YouTube? I don't know. But either way, I mean, they're not selling, you know, pay-per-view tickets to it. Uh, I don't know. Somehow it would, it would equal money, I guess, maybe. Then they could up the prize pool. Still, if you're counting on that money and you don't even qualify for the top 32, you're coming away with next to nothing, and that's not good, which is why the recurring pros who consider themselves full-time Magic players pretty much universally cheat. Because if they don't, they're going to go home and declare bankruptcy. That's why the entirety of the pro scene is an absolute joke. It doesn't work at a fundamental level. So anyway, going back to the article here, uh, we're revamping how players qualify for the Pro Tour. The short version is that we're doing away with pre-qualifiers, previously called PPTQs, or Plasma Pulse Tesla Cannons. The Q is silent. So they're creating a system to replace it that will provide a direct qualification path. And I believe what they're referring to there is like you had to go to a PPTQ at a respectable store that's at least tier four, I think three, something like that, in the WPN thing. Um, then hope nobody cheats and that the judges know what they're doing and that you do well. And then you had to go to like some kind of regional thing, I think, too. And then there might have even been another one above that. So that's a lot of travel, a lot of weekends. Yeah, a lot of money. Well, guess what? Magic's a hobby. I mean, you spend money to go fishing, too, like. I, I, that's why I don't think there should be full-time pros. So this includes a pilot program that will test out professional tournament organizers and best-in-class WPN stores running direct qualification tournaments. So basically, they're just going to large-scale regionals and you show up, you, you compete, that's it, I guess. I don't know how I feel about that. There's positives, there's negatives. It, it really just lets people get lucky and qualify for the pro tour if they just had one good day. Or if they cheated, but I think it would be harder to cheat at these because they said top tier, best TOs, you know, best judges. So I could go either way on it. I know it'll be easier on the people who want to qualify, so that's cool. But my solution has always been screw the pro tour, go to a GP. A lot easier to go to a GP instead of qualifying and just buy a damn ticket. So let's start with the event that hits every level of play, Magic Fest. And that's true, they do have fairly casual side events. In fact, I think they have full casual ones with no prizes or just like really dumb prizes. So that's cool. Oh, they did something with like a like a raffle, like a like a ticket system, but if you won, you got tickets or something. I thought that was kind of cool. I've been to a lot of charity fundraisers that do that. It's really hot. So the Magic community has made Grand Prix weekends about so much more than just the main event, and we would like or we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge and celebrate that. Um, yeah, they still don't want you there if you're white male, though. Let me just add that. If they can't check you off on their little you know minority list, um, then you know why? Why even show up? You're going to make it too white. Just stop. Oh, unless you're female, obviously. Oh, and if you're like, oh, I'm a member of this weird religion, so check that. But they don't give a crap about religion. <laughs> Disability status? Are you kidding me? They only care about your gender and your race. White male rolls up in a wheelchair. You think they give a shit? Oh, you have mild Asperger's? They probably already assumed you did because you're good at magic. When they say they want diversity, they mean their own version of diversity, not actual, like, federally protected groups like religions. And that goes double if you try to join the judge program. The head of it said they literally do not want more white males in it. He said it word for word. So anyway, the community has made them about fun magic gaming in all of its forms. Side events, artist booths, cosplay, panels, spell slinging. I literally don't know what that is. I hope it involves something to do with like trying to knock down milk cartons. And uh, yes, qualifying for pro tours. You fill a bag full of sand and spray paint it red. I'll sling that at whatever you want. I mean, I'm a pretty damn good uh, thrower. 
to recognize the full scope of the event, we're calling the whole experience Magic Fest. And honestly, that is a better descriptor because it, it sounds like a tournament when you call it a Grand Prix or a Pro Tour. To call it a fest, I think we'll get more people in attendance, and they've had less people in attendance, not just entering the event, but literally just being there, and that makes them sort of be obligated to charge less for vendors. And I heard it's like eight grand a table in some cases. Hello. I hope they meant per booth. Per table is a little much. I mean, I've been to flea markets. You don't go that high per table. I mean, the gun shows I go to are 40 bucks a table. I mean, come on. Well, vendorship only works if there's customers. So you want some butts in some, well, I was going to say seats, but they really just walk around. You just want butts there in general. So yeah, I think they're, they're renaming it Fest. So it's like, yeah, show up even if you're not competing. They really want to drive that home. That was pretty smart. Once again, nobody's showing up if you don't have funnel cake though. So there will still be a main event and we're calling that event the Grand Prix. Makes sense. Keep it consistent. And side events and prizes and, 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 and. I'm not kidding. That's what the sentence said and then it ended there. I would have said etc. but then again, I'm not Blake Rasmussen. It means the emphasis will be on coming to enjoy all of the events. And well, it should be. I mean, it really should be. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at some of these GPs, you can get in for free if you're not competing, or it's like $5, $10. I'm sure you got to pay for parking or something. So, hey, why not? And I have a feeling that's why they took some of the uh, Mythic Edition GRN boxes and said, hey, come to a Grand Prix and buy them. It kind of pays for your trip if you scalp them, just saying. So, um, yeah, enjoy all the events, including the Grand Prix, held over the course of three to four days. It's a place for all levels of play. It's a magic event and experience coming to your hometown. Uh, no, it's not, actually. You are not coming to my hometown. I do not live in Milwaukee. You know, they're probably not even coming to your country, to be perfectly honest. But anyway, uh, the most visible change is that Magic Fest will also or will now also be home to Pro Tours. So that means that Pro Tour Cleveland will be hosted at Magic Fest Cleveland. It means that if you bomb out of the first day at the Pro Tour, there's a whole well festival of magic for you to take part in uh, with the rest of the weekend. What? What was that sentence even trying to say? And shouldn't the Pro Tour be after the Grand Prix so that if you bomb out of the Grand Prix, you can... Oh, wait, no. When, what would the qualifier be? Are they simultaneous? These are the things I want to know. So, I don't know. If you bomb out of the Pro Tour, you're going to be depressed as hell. You're probably just going to order a bunch of desserts to your hotel room and, and pass out from a sugar like crash or whatever if you lose a grand prix that should have been what you expected you didn't even qualify for that crap hell if you expected to do well at either of them uh if you're not cheating uh everybody else is so you're not gonna win anyway oh and if it was a star cities game event if you're a white male you're not gonna win if it, the judges have anything to say about it i've heard that they side against you every single time if you're playing against one of their favorite minorities so I guess they're like, hey, if you get completely treated unfairly and cheated against and then the judges disqualify you because you're white, you can at least go get some funnel cake, which still they have not confirmed. I want to make that perfectly clear. They have not confirmed it. I'm just assuming they'll have it because they added the word fest. I wonder if they'll do chainsaw carvings too, like speed art. All of these are universal things in Wisconsin, by the way. I'm not even making this up. I mean, we do corn roasts and stuff. I mean, literally anything from the county fair to the state fair to the local level, it, it could literally be a concert, an outdoor concert. And they've got, they've got funnel cake, deep fried cheese curds, and uh, pretty much everything else I just said. So th this next sentence makes even more sense. And it means that if you hang around one of these magic fests till Sunday, you can watch the latest pro tour champion receive their trophy. Wow, what a great use of a day that most people aren't working instead of actually holding it that day and then maybe it is that night. Maybe that is the final day. I don't know or care. Uh, then head back to that commander game you and your friends wanted to get to. Or go to a bar and get punched by some crazy person who likes to dress as a princess and loves uh, Anita Sarkeesian. You know what? Fuck both these events. They're probably gun-free zones. I wouldn't even go. Your safety is at a huge, huge amount of risk when they disarm you on the way in. So Channel Fireball Events has the full schedule of magic events on their website, plus an update to the Grand Prix invite and payout structure. Head that way. You literally already said both of those and linked to both of those. Anyway, uh, head that way to find a magic fest coming to your neighborhood. Once again, you're not coming to my neighborhood. I guarantee it. Uh, okay, in 2019. Great, wonderful. I, we, I think we already knew where all six of them were. They already announced it. They're acting like that's news. Um, if you want to discuss magic fest on social media, we recommend using hashtag magic fest. Oh, that won't backfire. You guys should definitely not uh, air your complaints about this. Uh, honestly, there's not that much controversial other than, hey, the pro level sucks and everybody's cheating. But if you want to share your thoughts on that, hashtag Magic Fest <laughs> for the event as a whole or, or hashtag MTG City name for individual events. 
They should have put city name in square brackets, but I guess they didn't think most of you would know what that means. You're supposed to replace it with your city name. Oh wait, no, I'm falling for it. Not your city name, the city name of the place where it's being held that you definitely don't live in. So they go on to another section that says qualifying for the Pro Tour. The first two Pro Tours of 2019, Cleveland and London, are operating under the current qualification system. Nothing is changing there. So that's interesting. Um, those qualification seasons are already underway. Well, that makes sense. That's why they had to do it. They're already underway. So starting with qualifiers for the Pro Tour in Dallas-Fort Worth, which will start near the end of March, things are going to look a little bit different. Uh, they also have this diagram that makes absolutely no sense. I don't know if it's chronological. There's no guide. I couldn't even begin to describe it. Go look at the article yourself on Daily MTG if you think you can make sense of it. Uh, then the next section tries to explain this garbage graph. with the, They said there's three primary methods of qualifying for the Pro Tours. Uh, I, I assume all three of them are cheat. This is Pro Club and Pro Tour finish-based invites. Oh, that's true. They're uh, Duh. I mean, of course, they're keeping that. You win a previous Pro Tour, you go to the next one or something like that. Um, Grand Prix tournaments, yeah, if you do well at them, I guess you would qualify. I don't know, I'm not reading that paragraph. I'm already so done with this article. And then qualifying events, they have open and invite only. So they'll have an open one, but then also an invite only one. But it's not the PTQ system of old. Blake wrote that. I mean, did you really have to ask? Uh, I don't care. If anybody actually cares about this, you're on the wrong channel. Like, don't go to a pro tour. I mean, all I'm getting from this is there's no way to qualify other than driving out to the event and staying twice as long. So spend all the money on travel, spend all the money on the deck, prep, prepare like crazy, and then just cross your fingers and hope that you can qualify in one of the open events. And then if you don't, well, I hope you were already participating in the Grand Prix, or is it after it, or... Uh, well, they said you could. the Grand Prix would qualify for the Pro Tour. I don't know. They still won't give me a chronological thing. They made it sound like they're simultaneous. Boy, I hope you don't go there and be like, I'm going to go to the qualifier instead of the Grand Prix and try to qualify for the Pro Tour, and then you don't, and because of that, you miss the Grand Prix that you could have competed in. Wouldn't that be a fun weekend? Oh, and then let's add teams to this whole thing. I don't even know if 2019's having teams, but if you've got a same day find a team to compete with because you know you got the pool of people who qualified and then you got to form up into teams of three that would be hilariously disastrous and then you get stuck with a cheater on your team who disqualifies your entire team yes that's happened you know what i think i have made up my mind about this i said it looks like a positive thing on the surface i wasn't wrong but once you dive into it it seems like an absolute recipe for disaster I mean, the only positive thing is, okay, you get to watch two events if you go, it's probably cheap, you can sell some of your cards for above buy list to all the vendors there and get some good deals and crap, because it's all cash in person or whatever, and you might get a funnel cake. I hope you can get a funnel cake. You know what? The, the most important thing about these is the presence of funnel cake. I don't care what else they, they add or remove from this or how they qualify for it or really the price or anything else. It's so important, I'm going to make it the thumbnail. Also, I already know which one I'm using, and it's a fantastic picture. I love it. Well, now, wait a minute. Now they go back and say something about you can qualify outside the event, but then you can also qualify inside the event. So if you fail to qualify at one of the pseudo-regionals, then you can qualify there, but then you really better make it. This is really weird. Oh, and don't forget, Magic Online, MTGO, will continue to run qualifying events. So you can qualify there, too, and they were lying when they said those were the only ways to qualify. Got it all now? Me neither. Great. Oh, this will clear it right up, the last statement here. Uh, finally, note that while qualified players could previously only play in one regional PTQ, under the new system, players that can play in any number of tournaments for which they're qualified until they qualify for the Pro Tour. I don't think I even read that correctly, but it wouldn't have made sense even if I did. So the final paragraph, and this is where things get interesting. Thanks for sticking around this long. A year of change when we announced 2019 would feature six pro tours and already told you where and when they would be. Uh, we were signaling that next year is going to be a year of change. We are rethinking and reworking our entire competitive gaming system. Hmm. From qualifying events all the way up through Grand Prix, 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 Priuses, I don't know, and highest levels of pro play, 2019 is going to be a transition year towards something better. Hmm. As we build up to a competitive gaming structure, that will look very different come 2020. I wonder if we should take that very literally. Competitive Magic Gaming has a bright future, and 2019 is our launching pad. We'll see you there.
Ha! Not if Trump starts World War III by then, suckers. Yeah, I dropped the Trump card. Yes, that was an intended pun. So what they're probably saying is that they're going to go digital for the majority of the tournament. Probably not all like 3,000 people, but probably the top, you know, 64, 32, something like that. Because we know they're all cheating and manipulating shuffling and, you know, all this crap. Misrepresenting triggers, misrepresenting the board state whenever they think they can get away with it. And then all plausible deniability. Well, guess what? The computer enforces it. If you've got a question about something that just happened, tough nuts, call a judge. It's just going to be rigged unlimited arena accounts where you, you know, bring up your desk list and then you build it and there you go. And then, um, you just play it. And they probably got rid of, uh, those countdown timers. Cause you might, you know, call a judge and have to pause the game. Basically. What are the three major complaints about, uh, magic streaming and pro magic right now? Cheating, bad announcing and horrible camera work where you can't even read the cards and can't tell what's in somebody's hand half the time and then the announcers have no idea what's going on because they can't see any of the cards. Hmm, let's see. The announcers would be better if it was digital and they could just screen share it and nobody would be cheating if it's digital because you basically can't and if you would screen share it, the camera work wouldn't be crap. Necessarily, the mixing could still be terrible. Hmm, funny how that works. So, I mean, the, all the hints they're dropping, it's going to look way different, something way better. Um, it will look very different. Our gaming system. Odd choice of words, don't you think? Oh, they'd have to turn off the, the, uh, the rigging and the shuffle rigging and the I draw eight lands in a row for no reason and just shuffling right now on Arena. They can't be screwing up random that bad, okay? Computers in 2018 are really good at randomization, okay? Even at a basic level and based on clocks and stuff, you would have to screw up the code manually with some kind of weird sorting thing or rigging thing. And we all know that Arena is rigged in basically every way, shape, or form that it possibly could be. I suspect even the pack openings are rigged. And by rigged, I mean steered towards an end, not true random. Oh, and by the way, the devs and Wizards of the Coast staff have basically sort of in a roundabout way acknowledged that the shuffler has something wrong with it, which is a little generous because they did it on purpose. That's how programming works. So yeah, thanks for those five lands in a row when I was about to win the tournament. That That's great. I know you don't want to give me the prize money because I paid 500 and would get 1,000 and you don't like that. But then again, I played better and my deck's better. So maybe just let me win then. So yeah, they'd have to turn that off and also the freezing and the, yeah, I don't know. What if the computer crashes? What if the screen share program doesn't work? I mean, whip out your deck and play paper. I mean, duh. So yeah, if they do that, if they go all digital, go for it. That's my guess. I think they're going to do it. So what do you think of all these changes? Uh, as far as qualifying in the actual tournaments, who cares? I don't even care what you have to say about it. But will this make you attend without participating are you more likely to go just to go because it's kind of like a cheap comic con sort of almost or are you like no you guys don't even know what event security is i'm gonna stay home for my own personal safety you know like half the people that were going to twitchcon and then decided not to well let me know what you think about all this in the comment section and i will see you guys next video which is gonna be really spicy by the way